Hello and welcome to Chemistry Masters. So in today's video, we are continuing the pericyclic reaction concepts. So here in this video, we will be discussing the basic features of the pericyclic reaction and all the theories which are related to the particular concept. So this particular video will completely giving you the insight about all that thing. So let us begin. So the first feature of any pericyclic reaction is activation. Activation means the excitation of electrons. We all know that the electrons are responsible for any chemical reaction. Similarly, in pericyclic reactions also, the electrons are responsible for that. And the excitation of electron from the lower energy level to the higher energy level can be done by two ways. The first way is by heat and the second way is by UV radiations. Okay. So here a reaction is shown to you. So whatever is the condition, the electron will be excited to the next energy level. And when the electron will be excited to the next energy level, they will be covering the activation energy barrier and then they will be converted into their possible product. So here as the reaction is an example of electrocyclic reaction as we have discussed in our previous video also. So a cyclic movement of electron will take place in this manner, maybe a clockwise, maybe anticlockwise and then there will be formation of new bonds. Yes, certainly there will be loss of certain pi bonds and gain of sigma bond will be there that again we will be discussing from our next lectures. However, there are certain reactions which can be carried only in presence of heat or maybe in presence of light. Now the second feature of any pericyclic reaction is the involvement of pi electrons or you can say involvement of pi bonds. It is very much important for pericyclic reaction to have these pi electrons as well as their movement or you can say their shifting is again very much important. So due to the shifting of the pi bonds, generally the pericyclic reaction or the cyclic reaction happens. So whether it is a electrocyclic reaction as we have shown here, in this what will happen? The bond will be broken in a particular cyclic manner and you can see there is involvement of pi bonds. And the another thing which is very much important out here is that the pi bond should be in conjugation with each other. Only those pi bonds or pi electrons which are in conjugation with each other, they will be undergoing certain pery pericyclic reaction. Similarly, if you talk about any cycloaddition reaction, if we can take this example, uh, here also what will happen, a cyclic movement of the pi electron will take place. So again, you can see in this diene, there is conjugation present. And this particular structure is also having a double bond or ethene is present out here and that is giving you a cyclic structure. It is very much important that these system should have pi electron in them or pi bond in them. Similarly, in few of the cases, it may happen that a charge, maybe a radical, could be in conjugation with the pi electron system. As you can see in these three examples, where the A structure shows you allyl cation, B shows you allyl anion, and C shows you allyl radical structure. So here also, pericyclic reaction can take place. A formation of a cyclic product will be there, and these charges can also help in the movement of pi electron, and thus. These could also be taken as the example of pericyclic reactions. Similarly, if you talk about the third very much important feature of any pericyclic reaction is its stereochemistry. And this stereochemistry is many a time affected by the condition which we are providing for the reaction. That is the thermal condition or H new conditions. So if you observe the two structures or the reactant they are same only the difference which we have shown here it is in the condition which we are providing for the reaction to happen 
In the above one, you can see there is a thermal condition, means heat is being provided to the molecule. In the second condition, we are exciting the molecule or the pi electron with the help of light. So that's why you can say due to the change in the condition, the product which we are obtaining here, they are of two different stereochemistry. In the first one, you can see the two methyl group which are present here, they are in cis manner, while in the another one, they are in trans condition to each other. So, the how it happens, or what is the condition behind that, we will be discussing it in our coming lectures. So, it is very much important to understand that the stereochemistry of the molecule or maybe the product which is being produced, it can be affected by the condition which we are providing to the molecule. Now, we will be discussing some theories of pericyclic reaction which will be in detail covered in our coming lectures also. But yes, we here we will be discussing that what are these various theories on which pericyclic reactions are generally described. First theory is Woodward-Hoffman theory which is also known as conservation of orbital symmetry. And generally, this theory is based on the symmetry of molecular orbitals. So, before going towards the detail of this in our lecture, we should be knowing that what are orbitals. So, orbital we all know that these are the specific areas in which the condition of finding the electron is highest. Generally, they are shown in the manner which we have shown here, generally in the form of lobes. Okay. So, here we will be showing the orbital in terms of lobes where the upper lobe and lower lobe will be there. Maybe sometimes they are shaded like this or sometimes they are written as in form of plus or minus like that. That is the way by which we can designate them. Whenever you are talking about the molecular orbitals, so the molecular orbitals are shown like this as we have shown. So, in most of the cases, we will be take, taking these three structures. So, generally, if you talk about in ethene, there are two carbon which are associated with the double bond. So, we are showing its orbital like this or these two carbon which are present here, they will be undergoing the pericyclic reaction. If you talk about uh, butadiene structure, in butadiene, generally, there are two double bond which are in conjugation and which can take part in the pericyclic reaction. That's why two double bond means there will be four carbon which are associated with the pericyclic reaction or which will be involving in the pericyclic reaction. That's why there are four lobes shown. And similarly, if you talk about hexatriene molecule, 135 hexatriene, in that three double bonds are there which are in conjugation and these three double bonds are associated with six carbon. That's why the six carbon which has, which have been shown here, they are shown in these forms or you can say in these orbital forms. So these are the molecular orbital which we will be discussing in detail also in coming lecture and on these molecular orbital the woodward hormone theory is generally based. Similarly, if you talk about the next theory that is frontier molecular orbital theory that is in short it is known as FMO, it is based on the frontier molecular orbitals. Frontier molecular means the orbitals which are at the front or you can say which are at the end. So, here in ethene these two are at the end, in butadiene these two orbitals they are at the end and here in hexatriene out of these six these two are at the front or you can say at the end. So, on these two orbitals, generally the whole of the chemistry or pericyclic reaction will be dependent. Similarly, there is Woodward-Hoffman rule and Huckel-Mobius method which is also known as perturbation molecular orbital that is PMO method. So, in detail we will be discussing about all these pericyclic reaction theories in our coming lecture. So, this was all about the today's lecture. Please share it with your friends, like it, subscribe our channel and if you have any query you can certainly contact us over our email id or maybe over our whatsapp number provided in the description thank you for watching